exciting news. Today is the day. Today is the day it is starting. Today is the day you have all been waiting for, or I have been waiting for. Are you ready to know what it is? Do you think I'm going to say Home Design 101 is open for registration? Okay, it is, but that's not what I was going to say. March Madness! March Madness is here. <laughs> it is starting. How many of you are watching? Okay, how many of you have made a bracket or two? I'm a little late for the boys, but I made two for the girls. And I don't know. I don't know. I think this might be Iowa's year. All right, friends. That is really not why I popped on the microphone today. You know that. I know that. <laughs> but I am happy to talk to you about basketball anytime. What I do want to talk to you about, though, today is Home Design 101. It is open. I run these sessions. They're 10-week sessions. And the next one is starting. It's starting March 30th. So registration is open and it is only open for a week. Home Design 101 is my 10 week program where I walk you through the design process as you work in one room of your home. We spend a lot of time learning our aesthetic, understanding our color palette, learning how to create cohesive spaces, understanding scale, size, proportion, choosing product, making it look pretty on a mood board so you know what to purchase before you purchase, understanding the steps to starting, and so much more. Registration is open today, but it closes as soon as the spots are filled or on March 23rd, whichever one comes soonest. Why do I have spaces limited? Well, let me tell you. Because I was a first grade teacher, I know the importance of having small class size. You hear it probably every year when we go to the ballots, you hear reduce class size in education. And there's a reason for that. <laughs> I can speak firsthand why we would want small class sizes. And the same is here too. And if you are wanting to join, you're definitely going to want a small class size as well. Because what it means for you is my hands, my eyes, my ears. All of that is on your room as you're designing. All of it is double checking, triple checking, looking over your aesthetic, looking over your color palette, asking you questions to help you go deeper. And I can't do that when there's a kajillion people in the class. So space is limited. That means more attention on you, friend. And that is a very, very good thing. Home Design 101 runs for 10 weeks. Each week you get access to a brand new module, a learning opportunity for you to learn independently. And then we meet a week later to dive into questions, look at pictures in your own home, talking live over Zoom so that we can really get to the nitty gritty. You have access to a private Facebook group where we support each other, where we answer questions that can't wait for a whole week, where we are building community together. You may be wondering, who is Home Design 101 for? Well, let me tell you, it's for you if you would rather learn how to decorate your home on your own than hire someone else to do it for you. You understand and recognize that the process is going to probably be repeating itself throughout the years as your styles change, as you change homes, as you get new project ideas, and you probably don't want to spend thousands of dollars hiring someone to do it for you. You really want to take the time to learn it yourself. Then Home Design 101 is for you. It's for you if you've ever gone shopping and you have been so incredibly overwhelmed and frustrated at choosing the little things, let alone going somewhere where you need to choose the tile or the paint or something just a little bit bigger because whoa, is that going to be even more frustrating and overwhelming. Home Design 101 helps you reduce that overwhelm and that frustration because I teach you the steps, I teach you the tools you need in order to gain your confidence. Home Design 101 free is for you if you don't mind doing the work yourself. If you are a go-getter and you think, I don't mind moving my own furniture, I don't mind hanging my own artwork, I don't mind styling my own shelves, I don't mind painting my own walls, I don't mind it. In fact, I kind of like the idea. Then Home Design 101 is for you. Who is it not for, you may be wondering? It is definitely not for you if you don't have time or energy or effort to put towards learning the concepts. It's probably not for you if you would rather hire someone and spend thousands of dollars to do it for you. Definitely not for you. <laughs> Home Design 101 is not for you if you would feel more comfortable looking at Pinterest pictures and just copying a Pinterest picture and putting it in your own home and not learning why that approach is, has no reflection on you or your personality or your style. 
home design 101 is not for you if, quite honestly, you want to spend thousands of bucks. So (laughs) the link to register and learn more about it is in the show notes. All right, friends, let's get to today's episode. You're going to get to be a fly on the wall as we recap the live workshop that teaches you four steps to creating a home that you can't stop gushing about. And because this was a very long workshop, this is a two-parter. Enjoy today's show. We grew up with the phrase, home is where the heart is, but our culture has shifted and now the message is, home should be Pinterest perfect. I'm calling BS on that message. Home, it's not about the stuff, it's about the story. And whether you know it or not, your home is a reflection of you and is already saying something. So what is it that you want it to say? Hey, I'm Danny, a former first grade teacher turned home decorator. Going from a dual income to a single income so I could stay home with my babies meant budget, like ramen eating, Goodwill shopping budget. And I learned a few things along the way, like how to bring big style to your home without breaking the bank. And I'm sharing it all with you. Tips, tricks, decor, and design advice so you can learn to tell your story with your style. Where you can start living free from the Pinterest perfect trap and start living a life of intention. Welcome to Fig and Farm at Home, where we design happy living and where it doesn't have to be perfect to be beautiful. All right, can you guys see my screen? (laughs) Yeah, there are my teeny tinies. These guys are my why. These are the kiddos who have inspired so much for me, but I used to be a first grade teacher. And when I was teaching, I absolutely loved my job. It was so hard and so good all at the same time. But when I, when I had my first boy, Owen, the tall guy in the middle, he, um, I just wanted to stay home. I wanted to stay home and staying home meant a lot of sacrifice financially. It meant I couldn't, you know, afford pretty much anything. We went from two incomes to one. And I joke about having to be a goodwill shopper. Um, but the truth is that's what we did. And I joke too about eating ramen and we might not have eaten ramen, but we sure ate a lot of beans and rice and money was so incredibly tight, so tight that I remember waiting every month for the $10 JC Penny coupon to oh. arrive in the mail And JC, they don't have this at the top anymore. And I pretty sure they lost money on it, but the $10 coupon would arrive and I would buy the $12 shirt for my husband because he was going from graduate school to white collar job and he needed the fancy clothes. (laughs) So we would end up spending $2 to build his wardrobe each month. And as you can imagine, it went really, really slow, but (laughs) we got there. We got there. Mm-hmm. So money was tight. And as these kiddos went from that size to this size, me staying home and <laughs> ultimately going from, you know, having a little online Etsy store and tutoring on the side to doing what I'm doing today, I learned a lot. And I learned a lot of how to use our money super wisely to create a home that really serves our family and serves us well. Mm-hmm. This picture is a picture of us just this summer at my um, husband's farm, his parents' farm over in Eastern Washington. And um, tractor is not a prop. Tractor is a farm tool <laughs> 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 that Owen is going to learn how to drive this summer. So I'm super thrilled about that. Mm, so <clears throat> yeah, from from teeny tiny to now these kiddos, you know, I, I went from having a baby boutique where I worked um, little markets here and there, and I had an online store on Etsy. Do you guys shop at Etsy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So had an online store at Etsy. And um, when we moved from Iowa over here, I decided that I couldn't necessarily do both at the same time. And my passions were changing. My babies were getting bigger and I had a new home to decorate and new friends to make and together that's when they started asking those new friends started asking and coming into our home saying, how do you do that? How did you know to put these things together? And one thing led to another. And here we are, here we are today. (laughs) I still teach a little bit. I still um, coach in 
the, my middle schoolers, um, after school, I coach there, I coach basketball and volleyball and love it. Love it. Love it. <laughs> All right. So today we are going to focus on these four things. So I'm giving you the cliff notes version straight away. Um, the four steps to creating a home that you can't stop gushing about is knowing where to start. That is the very first step. And of course, we're going to flush it out all together. We're going to go a little bit deeper in each step, landing mostly on one, one of the most important. The step two, and this is it. This is the spoiler alert. This We're going to learn to define our aesthetic. And this, if we were to choose, if I were to say there's one thing that is absolutely most important for us to focus on when we're creating a home that we love, this is it. Defining your aesthetic. Learning to make a plan. Planning is essential. And planning can get you out of so many hiccups when you are not entirely sure what it is that um, you want to create, what it is you want to do. Planning is essential. It helps keep you on track. And so does your budget. So working with your budget, we can't not talk about budget. Budget is something that everyone wants to talk about. And they think that this is the most important, but actually it is not. Defining your aesthetic definitely is. So we're going to spend most of our time there because, spoiler alert, <clears throat> even if we spend some of our time talking about where knowing where to start, knowing how to have our budget work for us, and knowing how to create a plan, they all point back to your aesthetic. So when I know exactly where to start, and if I know how to spend my money, and if I know what plan I want to put in place, all of these come back and point directly to your aesthetic. Your aesthetic is going to be a lens and a filter that is that that all of the the things that we're going to purchase, the plan we're going to make, the budget we're going to allocate to our home, it's going to be filtered through our aesthetic. So why is that so important? It is so important because I want it, I want to have you guys think about this. You know, every time we go to Target or we go to Home Goods or we go and we go and just buy the teeny tiny little thing and we stand in the aisle and we stand there being super frustrated because we don't know if that thing that we're looking at is going to go with what we have at home. We don't know if the color is going to go in our color story. Do we even have a color story? We don't know if this thing that I think, oh, that's really cute, is going to end up being a waste of money because we bought the wrong thing. It We bring it home and it doesn't look quite right. So when you understand your aesthetic, you reduce that frustration, you reduce the overwhelm, you reduce the <clears throat> fatigue, and ultimately you build confidence. So a few years ago, actually about a year and a half ago, I went with my husband, we had a little bit of time, the kids were back in school and we were deciding, to, well, I roped him in, <laughs> we're going to get the facts straight, I roped him in to spending a little time redoing the floor in our bathroom, in our downstairs bathroom. Originally, it was probably the color of this brown here and it was big 18 by 18 inch squares, <clears throat> very two th early 2000s, and we wanted to update it. And we had a little bit of time, a little bit of money. And so we went, dropped them off at school on the first day, went right to Lowe's. We're in the tile aisle, <laughs> excuse me. And Greg is standing there. I wish so badly that I had a, um, a camera to record what was happening because he was standing there looking at all of the tile. And you know, you can picture the tile aisle, right? It's, it is very, um, it's full. It's busy. There's so much to choose from. And he's standing there looking and thinking, oh, this is cute. And this is nice. And this is wonderful. Hello, there you are. Hi. <laughs> and looking all around to try to figure out what one we should be choosing. And within, and I, I exaggerate maybe a little bit, but only by about a minute. It took me about one minute to narrow down from all of the choices to three. Wow. Because <clears throat> I had my aesthetic in mind. Now, 
And then I told Greg, oh, hey, here, here are the three that I think we should look at. And from that, that I, just by having a really firm foundation of what my aesthetic was and what we have going on in our home, not negating Greg's opinion, I still, we, he was very, actually very relieved that I could narrow it down so quickly. Mm -hmm. And then we still had the choices to work together. We still had those three choices of that would work really, really well with the things that were happening in the rest of our home. So it was a, a wonder, that's a, just a great illustration of having, when you know your aesthetic, you're able to reduce overwhelm, reduce decision fatigue. We, we spent 30 minutes in Lowe's. It could have been hours <laughs> mm -hmm. and it could have been <clears throat> hours away from doing the project we were able to get in and out get all the things we needed and get to work that day so knowing your aesthetic really really helps us that's where we're going to spend most of our time on today but first knowing where to start we do need to talk about that so some action points i really want you girls to walk away with today these are some things that <clears throat> if after we're all done today, I'm hoping that you are inspired to take a little bit of action. And wherever you're wanting to start, if you understand the purpose of why you're wanting to start and the change you're wanting to make in that space, that is going to be a guiding action for you. So what is the purpose? Is the purpose <clears throat> because you have not functional furniture? Is the purpose because you want to use that room in a way that you haven't been able to use it for. If your living room is a dumping pile, but you want it to be a gathering place, what is the purpose? Do you want to redecorate your home because it doesn't feel like there's some continuity that's running between each space and you want that purpose to feel united? Understanding and identifying what it is you want to do and why you want to do it is a critical first step. And then choosing a feeling word. Oh, hi. Is that a kitty up there? Oh, <laughs> Pearl. hello. Um, choosing a feeling word. And this is, this could sound very fluffy, but I don't want it to feel fluffy. This is really very essential. How do you want your home or the room you're working <laughs> on to feel? <laughs> Being able to identify and label and name a feeling is almost as important as understanding your purpose and almost as important as understanding your aesthetic. Because as we move forward into starting and into planning and into budgeting, we're going to run all of the things that we want for our room through the lens, through the filter of that feeling word and the aesthetic. We're going to run them through. So as you're thinking, oh, I really love this couch, or I really love this color, or I really love this item, we're going to filter it through, well, does it meet your aesthetic? And does it make your home feel the way you want it to feel? So for example, if I wanted my home to feel moody and broody and it's dark and cozy and kind of like Professor Plum's library, dim light and all of that. And I go to Target and I see a bright pink pillow and I think, oh, that is so cute. And I love that bright pink pillow. And oh my goodness, it's got all kinds of fun on there. If I love that bright pink pillow and I want to bring it home, I'm going to run it through the lens of, does it feel moody and broody and like Dr. Plum's, Professor Plum's library? Mm, not quite. Does it feel like that meets the aesthetic that is probably all of those descriptive words that made my home moody and broody and Professor Plum? Dark colors, leather, you know, all those different elements that could make that home feel like that. Mm, that pink doesn't quite work. <laughs> so that having a feeling word is really important. And feeling word doesn't have to be a verb. It can be, it can be, it can just feel cozy. It can feel inviting. It can feel warm. It can feel playful, inspiring. It can feel simple, whatever word you want your home to feel, there is no right <clears throat> or wrong answer here. It can feel any of those things. Another good place to start is by simply decluttering. And you probably have heard that phrase, um, don't put a, don't put lipstick on a pig. Have you heard that phrase? <clears throat> and a pig is still a pig, but if you put lipstick on it, it's not going to make it any prettier, right? 
And oftentimes, a lot of us get stuck in this space where we say, I really want some sort of change in my home. I want some sort of different feel. But really what we're wanting is the removal of the stuff that's getting in the way of us enjoying our home. And so if you can start by decluttering, if that is an issue for you, and it has been for me, it really has been. This is something that I identified early on as a trigger and removing that has made my space feel so much more breathable, livable, lovable. And honestly, I wish I would have done this when the kids were toddlers because when they were toddlers and you know that you know how that life is when you have a thousand what felt like a thousand children <laughs> running through your space a thousand children you're feeding everyone someone's got a poopy diaper you're running out the door to get kiddo to kindergarten and it's just kind of chaos all the time if i wouldn't have had to fight the clutter of my home at the time i think i would have been a much happier toddler preschooler early childhood parent quite honestly. <laughs> oh, I need to apologize to my husband for listening every time. Hey, come home. When are you coming home? No. Oh, really? In two hours? You need to get home now. <laughs> and honestly, decluttering is a huge part of that. Okay. So when you're in the starting phase, here are some things to avoid. You want to avoid purchasing anything. Put your credit card away, give it to your husband, put it in a clump of water in the freezer, ice cube it, Get it out of there because purchasing is not the time right now. You want to avoid skipping a plan and you want to avoid not learning your aesthetic. So you can see how all of these things, these four steps that we're talking about today, really go hand in hand. And you'll learn a little bit more about that as we go into each one. So don't purchase anything. Don't skip over a plan and don't skip over learning your aesthetic. Okay, so defining your aesthetic. What on earth does that mean? And I know this is like tomato, tomato. Some people say aesthetic. Some people say aesthetic. That's how I pronounce it. But it doesn't really matter because it's different than your style. And here's why. Can you guys think of <clears throat> a style, a decorating style that you've heard of? Traditional. Traditional. Yeah. Nautical. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, so nautical. Yep. 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 And all of those are so incredibly global. Those are such global terms. And if you think about it from the terms of the manufacturer's point of view, they're trying to sell their product, right? They're trying to help you as the consumer make better choices because you identify with traditional or nautical or farmhouse or you name it. They're trying to help you along to spend their money with them <laughs> ultimately <laughs> and that that's great but it can be so incredibly confusing because here's what we have I mean here's just a few you have industrial mm -hmm. and nautical and boho and farmhouse and cottage and country and French and all yada 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 and then yeah. you start mixing them and now you have classic boho and you have French farmhouse and you have coastal modern and you have modern colonial all the things. And what it boils down to is quite honestly, just a little bit of mumbo jumbo. <laughs> it's just a little, what it isn't, it isn't Susan. It isn't Liz. It isn't Danny. It isn't any of us. It is broader than that. And your aesthetic should be as unique to you as your fingerprint. So when you have someone walk into your home, when you have someone even, even you, when you come into your home, we want your homes to be a space that feels like a breath of fresh air. We want it to be a space that feels like a respite from all the stuff that's happening in the world outside. We want it to be a place where you can be free to love those people who you share your home with. We want it to be all those things and not you fighting against it. But what's the ultimate compliment is when you open the door to a friend, your kiddos, your parents-in-law, whoever, when they give you that ultimate compliment of, this feels just like you. Your home feels like you. 
And mm -hmm. we want your fingerprint to be on every space within your home because you are really, you're choosing every single product. You're making the selection of paint. You're making the selection of pillows and blankets and artwork and all the things. So it should have your fingerprint on it. Not just the fingerprint from literally hanging it up. It should have your kind of like your DNA on it. It should be a reflection of you and tell your story. It should tell your family's personality and show that through. Okay, so how do we do that? That's the, the, the question. How do we figure out our aesthetic? So here's a, a picture. And I know, are you, Liz, you're on Pinterest, right? Yeah. Okay. And are you, Susan, on Pinterest? Mm -hmm. Yes. You're on Pinterest too. Okay. A lot of times when we go to Pinterest, you, we have these really beautiful pictures that are staring back at us and we can appreciate the picture and that's a wonderful place to start. And so I chose three that aren't necessarily on my board, but that are ones that I absolutely love looking at. Here's one. And if I take a look at this picture, I'm thinking, yeah, this is really, it's fun and playful and bold. And I have a lot of descriptive words for this picture. If this was an Airbnb, sign me up, book me here because I want to be there. I could picture it in my home. It's really lovely. But then you know what? Then I kind of like that one too. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, gosh, it looks stately. It looks refined. It looks cozy. It looks kind of like that Professor Plum's look that I was telling you about earlier. It looks like I want to go sit in that chair in that corner and read a book and have my coffee. Mm -hmm. I love that. Oh, mm -hmm. but then I like this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this is bright and airy and I feel inspired in this space. I feel like I want to, well, not drop anything, first of all, but then I feel like I want to clear <laughs> off the coffee table and sit down and play games with my kiddos. Mm -hmm. So how do you define, if I can appreciate all three of these pictures, if I can look at them and say, I really like each one of them, but they are so incredibly different from each other. How do you start defining your aesthetic from that? Because we do, and, and I teach this in my Home Design 101 course, we do define our aesthetic. We spend a lot of time on that actually, about two weeks because it's so tricky. And we use Pinterest to do that. And sometimes when we use Pinterest, we use it in a way that is very distracting. It can be inspiring. That's what Pinterest is for, but it's really very distracting. And what turns out, if I were to go look at your Pinterest boards, what I might see is a really lovely collection of beautiful photos. But in order to understand your aesthetic, we need to turn that collection into now a textbook, kind of. You need to become a student of design in order to figure out what is it about this room that I love so well that is also in this room that I love so well that is also in this room that I love so well. And that is how you learn your aesthetic. So here is what we do. Here's where you want to take some notes. I see you girls are so good. You're taking notes. I love it. So when you are trying to define your aesthetic, I want you to choose an inspiration photo. And this inspiration photo should be of one room. Maybe it's the room where you're wanting to start in your home. Let's say you're wanting to do your living room. I know, Susan, we're working on your living room. Liz, do you have a room that you're wanting to work on? Is it still that front room? Yeah, and it still looks the same. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're only about 200 days from that. Yeah, but I mean, well, it's there's like less stuff. It's pretty bare. Okay, okay. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're wanting to start whatever room you're wanting to start in, you're going to Pinterest and you're naturally searching that room. We'll say living room or library or dining room, whatever room you're in, <clears throat> you are searching in that room and you're looking through the beautiful pictures that Pinterest populates for you and you're choosing one. And the one I want you to choose is the one that feels the most inviting, the one that feels like oh my gosh, something is like drawing me in. And if I could literally step out of my space right here and into that photo and sit on that couch and pick up that book, that is the one I want you to start with, that one inspiration photo. 
And that inspiration photo is going to serve as your, as your textbook. You are going to now put on your Sherlock Holmes hat, get out your magnifying glass, and you're going to look at every single thing in this room and write down all of the things that you absolutely love. So imagine now I'm sitting right there where those colorful pillows are on this couch and I'm looking around and I'm writing down all the things that I really love. I love the pop of color. I love that there's pink and yellow and blue and they're so vibrant. I love that there's geometric shapes all around. I love the streamline of the, of the furniture, including the coffee table. I love the layering look of these two tables. It kind of looks a little bit nested. So I'm literally writing down everything. <clears throat> I'm writing down colors I see. I'm writing down textures I, I could feel because remember I'm putting myself in this room. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm writing down things that catch my eye and make me want to go and explore it even further. But sometimes you might actually be in a space and you might notice too things that are a little jarring to you, things that you're like, ooh, but I don't like that. You're writing that down in a separate column. So you're writing maybe all the things that you absolutely love, 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 and even the things that you don't love. And you're being as detailed as you possibly can. And it's going to feel a little bit nitpicky and it's going to feel like it take it's taking a little bit long, but that is a really good foundation for what's to come. So you're paying attention to textures, colors, metals, shapes. You're paying attention to teeny tiny little details like the fringe on the edge of that carpet. Oops, let me see if that will disappear in a second. You're paying attention to the legs of furniture. Oh. You're paying attention to the plumpness. Oh. You're paying attention to how high plants are, how low plants are, the way that pictures are framed, anything and everything that you can take in with your senses, you're paying attention to and writing it down. <clears throat> and that's just the beginning. So we're going to do the same thing and we're going to do it a few more times. So you're going to go into another search but you're not gonna do it that same day. You're going to walk away, you're gonna go do yoga, go walk the dog, go pet the kitty, whatever you're gonna do, you're gonna take a little break from it. Because if you go into Pinterest again, what's gonna happen is it's gonna become that distracting tool that, oh, I'm collecting a picture book. I'm collecting this, these beautiful pictures and we don't want a collection. We want to make sure that we posture ourselves in a way that we are the student. <clears throat> and when you do that, you're gonna, after you've taken a break, you're going to come back in. You're going to search for the same room, living room, or traditional living room, or library. And you're going to find another picture. Another picture that draws you in equally as well. Another picture that you feel like, oh my gosh, if it was possible, I would time warp from here on this side of the screen to there. And I would take a seat in that cozy chair. And I would take a seat there and I would curl, I would get a blanket and I would get the cup of coffee and I would read and I would hope it would be snowing outside. <laughs> you would kind of put yourself into that situation and you're going to do the exact same thing in that photo and in that room, imagining that you are there, imagining that you are noticing <clears throat> with your Sherlock Holmes hat and your magnifying glass and your journal by your side imagining all and noticing all of the things that are there that catch your attention in a very good way. <clears throat> the things that you are loving, the little details, like the brass knobs on those, those um, shelves above the window, like the curtains that are recessed inside of that big frame of the window, like the little beadwork, um, the, the brad nail heads that are, that are on the chairs like the curvature of the chair. You're paying attention to all the details. And if you're not quite sure, if you still land on the surface of it's pretty or it's nice or I like the color, I want you to start training yourself to ask yourself the next question. Why do I like the color? <clears throat> or what is it about the color or that wall that is so bold that I like? Oh, well, I like the color, but what I really like are the frames around 
um, the molding around the TV. I really like the molding on the floor. I really like that actually that molding on the floor is not white, like so many homes. I like that it's black. I like that it feels monochromatic. I like that that those window, the curtains that are recessed inside of that window frame look velvet and they are matching with the wall. So you're you're really asking yourself more than what why why it's pretty you're asking yourself t- tell me more i if i were a teacher and i said give me all the adjectives tell me everything that is the goal you want to have as much description as you can in order to identify what it is that you really truly love do you love the pattern on the carpet do you love that this coffee table is really thin lined and you can see from top to bottom I can see that it's gold and I can see that it's muddled gold on the edge. Do you like that? Or would you prefer that it was solid? You're looking at textures. What you can't see in this picture, I wish it would have left it for you, but underneath that plaid pillow, that there is a um, almost chartreuse green, olive green uh, velvet couch. And that, that really was one of the things that drew me in. And do you like velvet? You're so you're paying attention to absolutely everything in the photo, and you're doing it. You're taking you're doing it for one photo. You're taking a break. Go walk the dog. Go to church. Go grocery shopping. Go wherever you're going, and then do it again. And you're going to repeat that process multiple times. I would say about five to ten times is what you're going to repeat. But you don't just want to pick any photo. You want to pick the ones that you really do truly feel like, I really want to go sit in that chair. And if you don't feel that, if you can't identify a feeling for the word, the picture that you're looking at, maybe that is not the photo for you. So if you look at this photo and you think, meh, try looking on Pinterest for another inspirational photo. So you want to have a feeling associated with the space. For this one, for example, it feels fun. It feels playful. I like playful. I like fun. I feel like I could be in there. I feel like this is an invitation for inspiration. I feel really cozy in this space. Honestly, what I feel like is I want to take out my book and I or my journal and I want to write a book in this space. This feels like it could be inspirational in a different way. And in here, I feel light and bright and airy. So you are identifying all of the teeny tiny little descriptive terms that you're noticing. And you now have five to 10 sitting in front of you. You have five to 10 ideas. And what you're going to do at this point is you're going to take a look at, and you're going to lay them down. So I hope you have five different papers to do this with. And you're going to take your cute little highlighter or your marker or your crayon or whatever you have that's a color coded. And you're now going to go through each picture or each descriptive page you just wrote. And you're going to identify the design elements that you noticed in this room. As well as this room. As well as that room. And you're going to start noticing now the common denominator that is floating throughout. Now, I kind of went fast in here, and usually when I'm looking at someone's Pinterest board, it doesn't take me very long to pick up on that common denominator. Um, It takes me not, not too long at all. Do you guys notice any similarities between these three rooms? The the leather accent chairs. Uh Uh-huh. Yep. All of them have leather chairs. Yep. And so that would be on that list of your, now your design elements, your aesthetic, you are drawn to leather. Now we might go a little further down the road later on and you might decide that actually black leather isn't for you, but it's this kind of vintagey worn camel leather that you like. So once you start identifying that broader term like leather, you're then going to look for terms in Pinterest like uh, living rooms with leather chairs. And now you're going to do the same thing with that so that you can identify the leather chair you like, the leather, the style of leather. Do you like black leather? Do you like dark leather? Do you like warm leather? Yeah. Susan, do you see anything? That's, I was just, 
the first one is the one that kind of throws me a little bit. I mean, I, yeah. I you know, it's different, a lot different to me than the other two, but yeah. um, <clears throat> I mean, in, in the last two, I just kind of see a, what, what you and I've talked about, you know, just kind of a, a, co a unity or a calm kind of vibe, even though it's very dramatic, the black yeah. one is really dramatic, but it's, it's just a unified. Yeah. You know, and you just said work. a word that I would put on your list and that word is calm. They mm -hmm. feel really calm because this one doesn't necessarily feel calm. And of course, calm is going to look different for each of us. If we were to really dive into what that meant, but that would be a word I would put on your list, Susan. It mm -hmm. feels calm. And we know, Susan, if this doesn't feel calm to you, we would not, we would steer clear from that in your aesthetic. Liz, mm -hmm. if this felt calm to you, maybe we would identify what, yeah, she's like, no. Okay, let's say this <laughs> felt calm to me. <laughs> and the thing that could feel calm mm -hmm. is that there's no clutter. There is no clutter in here. That feels really calm. It feels playful and calm at the same time. So you can even by picking that feeling word, you can figure out why does it feel that? So you're asking, you're constantly asking yourself that next question, why and why and why? So some things I noticed straight away in all of these, there are natural elements in each one of these. So we've got the tree, we've got this um, fun little wood table, though they painted it yellow. It's a, a tree stump. Um, we've got this nice wood war warm wood but we've got the stack of wood over here to the left that kind of looks like it's um on a feature wall we've got this cork board that presents itself as warm and natural like a natural element so there's lots of natural elements in here and there's natural elements in here with of course the warmth of the wood the the living tree we've got the wood bowls here and then in here, we have the warmth that presents itself from the natural elements. We've got the, the nice wood mantle. We've got this rattan, which, and these um, baskets and this wood ladder. All of those are um, warm and kind of that natural element. There's black in each one. Black is anchoring. So there are things that kind of combine. They, they are very, very different, but you can... Even with pictures that are so different, you can pinpoint things that could be very similar. Okay, let me show you. This is an example of someone doing this, one of my students doing this and feeling and finding their aesthetic. So we want your aesthetic now to be all of those design elements, those common denominators that you found through all of your inspirational photos. So for example, hers were velvet, warm wood, clean lines, brass, unexpected details, bright and airy, deep green, vintagey. She really liked grandma-y, which that <laughs> meant something to her. That was a feeling word for her. Um, matte black. These now become your aesthetic. So as you are now choosing how to start and where to plan and where to invest your money, these things are the filter that you're going to bring all of your purchases through that you're going to bring um, even put with your feeling word. And if your feeling word was playful, we'll say, oh, does playful feel like brass? Oh, I don't know about that. You know, you might then need to refine just a little bit more and decide is your feeling word off or is your aesthetic off? All right. So when you're doing your aesthetic, some things to avoid. This is a big process. It takes a long time. And when I teach it in Home Design 101, it is literally two, we spend two weeks on this. So it is something that is so incredibly important. And one thing to avoid is to rush the process. So to do multiple pictures at one time, to think that I'm going to get it done in one weekend. This is something that will evolve over time. And as you start becoming a student of design, as you start putting on that Sherlock Holmes hat and getting out that magnifying glass, this is something that you are able to pick up on these elements over and over and over again. It just becomes easier and more natural, kind of like riding a bike. But it is something that needs to be practiced, just like 
if I were to go to the gym and shoot some hoops, I would need to practice that over and over. The other thing to avoid during this phase is purchasing anything. Don't purchase anything. Don't purchase a thing. And so you can see how already in two steps and knowing where to start and in defining your setup, we're not purchasing anything. <laughs> we're holding back because here's what happens, girls. And I want you to take a note on this. If we rush the process and if we dive into purchasing something because maybe it was on sale or maybe we found the good deal at Costco or we thought, oh, it might work. What can happen is that we purchase the thing that now we're bound to. And it is a high purchase price. It is something that now we're kind of stuck to, we're handcuffed to because I I can't take it back. I, that was, that couch was $2,000, we'll say. And now I have to design my room around this couch that now I realize, oops, that wasn't my aesthetic or oops, I jumped the gun on this. So purchasing before you make a plan, purchasing before you um, know your aesthetic can be um, hard to remediate. We can always remediate it, but it can be hard to remediate. The other thing to avoid is copying a, de a design. So if you find one of those inspirational photos as you are having your Sherlock Holmes hat on and you're finding one that you love, 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 copying it from Pinterest and putting it in your own home can be um, can be tricky. Every once in a while it works, but here's what ultimately happens. What you're doing is you're copying someone else's aesthetic and their personality. And even though it's very, um, very complimentary to that person, there's no fingerprint that says Liz or no fingerprint that says Susan. There's no fingerprint that has your name tied to it. And so it, it is a lovely piece. It is a lovely room, but it's not necessarily filtered. It, the choices aren't filtered through your aesthetic. They're filtered through someone else's. And one thing, you know, I had a client a few years ago who had a very lovely home, but as each, I went into each room and she was showing me her home, she had a very different look and feel in each room. And what ended up, what it ended up looking like was no continuity between each space. It looked like a patchwork quilt where we had farmhouse in one room and we had uh, super traditional in another. And we had, um, I don't know, nautical in one. It, it looked like a patchwork quilt. There was no continuity between it, but boy, they sure looked lovely in and of themselves when you shut the door. But once you open the door and looked out, there was nothing that unified the space. So of slowing down, taking your time through this and not purchasing anything is important. Hey, real quick before you go, if you learned something new or found value in today's podcast, would you head over to iTunes to Fig and Farm at Home and leave a review and subscribe to the show? That would be awesome. And if you'd like to connect with my community of mamas who are learning to be intentional storytellers within their own homes, join us at bit.ly forward slash design 101 group. There's always more room at the table. See you soon.